Hello all the rock lovers and all the geologists out there and all the students out there I am back to YouTube, I finally have time to record more videos for you guys I know you've been waiting for more geology content and I'm finally back In today's video I want to talk about uh, and give you some ideas on how to decide what type of geology you should be doing what kind of geologist you should become because that's probably the most question I get asked on Instagram by the way if you do want to reach to me the best way is through Instagram subscribe to me at Shia Girl and feel free to DM I do get back to all of you sometimes it takes a week or two a lot of questions I get asked is mostly hey should I become a petroleum geologist or what kind of geologist should I be doing or I like dinosaur bones uh, should I become a paleontologist now obviously I cannot tell you what you should be doing with your life and what kind of geology you should take but I can give you some food for thoughts and some ideas on how to decide what you should be studying and how I decided to become a petroleum geologist and why I decided that so if you don't know, or maybe you like thinking of becoming a geologist, there are all sorts of different type of geologists. There are environmental geologists, mining, petroleum, uh, volcanologists, paleontologists, planetary geologists. And at some point in your career, in your education, you have to decide what type of geology you want to do. Depends on your university, depends on your school. My school required us to pick a specialty in our second year. So first year was just general geology for everyone. And then our university offered different streams. They had environmental, petroleum, general geology and geochemistry. Now, so that's the first thing you should look. If you're thinking about becoming a geologist or maybe becoming a certain type of geologist, you have to look at what your school or the schools you're considering going to are offering for programs because not every school offers say for example petroleum geology or not every school offers mining type of geology courses so you have to be mindful of the school you're going into what are they offering and the second thing which is so important and that's probably the most crucial piece of information that you should consider is what type of job can you get in your region Again, probably the second most often asked question is can I come and be a petroleum geologist in Canada or can I, become, can I relocate to United States and work there? The short answer is yes, uh, a lot of geologists do relocate and a lot of geologists do move internationally. However, that shouldn't be your plan A. It, it shouldn't be your default plan of getting a job. It's very hard to get a job straight out of university in a different country. A, because a lot of companies, uh, well, they won't hire you without any experience. And B, it costs them a lot of money to relocate you. Um, there's a complicated visa process that has to happen for you to come to a different country and work in a different country. So that don't count on that. Uh, what you should be counting on is getting a job in your other city or your region or your country because that's easier, right? You're already legally allowed to work in your country, you speak the language, you know the process, you know the hiring process, so it's much easier to get a job uh, where you're at rather than trying to look overseas. With that, um, I don't know in every, like I, I, I know a lot of you are not from Canada and not from United States, so I don't know the process of how you would go about looking for a job in your country. But for Canada, for example, or in US, you can go online and go on indeed.com or just even Google and just type jobs, geology jobs, Alberta, or geology jobs Canada. And Google will give you lists of companies that hiring uh, yes, geologist oh, Google was looking for geology jobs for me <laughs> and uh, you can see what companies offer now if you w say if you want to study volcanoes but you live near where near vol a volcano chances are no one's gonna hire a volcanologist in your region and you will have to relocate or you might have to go to university in that area to have to kind of increase your chances of getting hired as a volcanologist but if you like me the reason I picked uh, petroleum is because I live in Alberta and Alberta is a big petroleum hub most companies that hire geologists are petroleum companies so it's logical that if I pick a geology degree uh, I would most likely find a job in Alberta Environmental geologists are more versatile. They can work for various industries, not just petroleum. Mining companies hire them, uh, remediation companies hire them, construction companies hire them. So they are more versatile where they can go. Um, others had to relocate to Ontario because there's more money in there. So they had to go and relocate within the country. So uh, look 
online what type of jobs are available in your region before you pick your specialty. Second uh, or third, third tip is if you're in university and studying geology and you're not sure, like say you're just doing general geology and then you have to decide when you're looking for a job what stream to go into, I recommend doing different research as an undergraduate student. I was fortunate enough to be able to apply for a grant and receive the grant to do research and I was looking for a professor and one professor was offering to do research on interplanetary geology and I've never even I never even knew that that's a thing. I never knew there is um, like scientists studying, well I knew there are scientists studying other planets but I never knew that could be me. And so when he, um, the professor offered me that position and kind of told me, okay, I have a couple meteorites that need to be studied and need to be typed. I said, yes. And I'm so glad I did. It was the most, one of the most interesting researches I have done. And also my undergraduate thesis I did with the same professor and I did it on Mars stratigraphy. Now again that's something in petroleum stream they don't offer courses like that they don't offer courses on interplanetary geology but that opportunity came to me and I took it because not because I wanted to be interplanetary geologist but I took it because I wanted to broaden my horizon and to see if I like it. I absolutely love that research one of the best researches I've done was studied Mars stratigraphy by using uh, NASA satellite images. Obviously, I didn't become an interplanetary uh, geologist, but that research opened up a lot of doors for me. Um, in fact, one of the very first questions my interviewer asked when I applied for petroleum geology is they looked at my resume and said, hey, we saw that you studied Mars stratigraphy, like planet Mars. Um, like we've never seen that before, we've never seen any other students do that, can you tell us more? And that opened up a conversation that opened up a door for me because it was unique. So when you're studying in geology, don't limit yourself to just your stream. Uh, make sure to explore different, uh, different varieties just because you might not even know that you like uh, certain things, right? Like try do research in geochemistry or like uh, if you're in mining, try to do research in environmental geology because you might love it and that might be a decisive factor for your career later on and also helps your resume in, in the long term. Okay, and the other last two things to consider. Uh, once you graduate, you have to decide, okay, do I want to be a field geologist or an office geologist? That applies to different industries. Um, I will speak specifically to petroleum just because I know that industry. So when I graduated, I had a decision to make. There were field positions available and there were office positions available. I picked an office position. And what that means is I spent 90% of my time in the office. I had a seven to five job. We had the longer days, but I, I was in the office. Um, I was just doing maps. I was looking for drilling locations and I would communicate with a field geologist that was uh, on the drilling rig getting that information to me. But only about 10% of my time I spent traveling to the rig uh, and I, when I was never away from home for more than um, like a week. The field geologist on the other hand spent 90% of their time in the field. So this is um, a he or she uh, that would be in a remote location living in a shack uh, on a drilling rig and often spent months uh, out nowhere, no civilization around. That doesn't apply just to petroleum. I know mining geologists that also work in a field and in the office. There are environmental geologists that sort of, they have uh, office positions but they also have field positions where they go out and test water, test soil, pick soil samples, pick um, whatever, like drilling test walls. So that's something to consider long term because when you graduate, field position might sound uh, incredible to you. And I know I was uh, tempted very much to apply to those positions just because it sounds really cool and it sounds like a really geology position where you're out in a field and testing and looking at rock and such. However, you have to think long term. Not every everyone is suitable for that position just because you spend often spend weeks away from home, away from your family. And as you get older, um, you want to start a family, you want to have kids, or may maybe you don't. But if, if you do, that's something to consider because it's very hard to leave your family and go out in the field and be nowhere, like in the middle of nowhere 
and especially if you're in Canada, not only you're in the middle of nowhere, but also you're in the middle of nowhere in minus 30 and with the snow around you and it's really cold and it's very harsh conditions often. So you have to think about it in advance. And the reason you have to think about it in advance is because once you get a couple of years of experience in a certain kind of stream, it's harder to switch. A lot of companies uh, wouldn't look, so if you are, I myself, I'm a developmental geologist, so I look uh, for new drilling locations, I do maps in the office, but if I were to apply to a field geology positions right now, um, they would downgrade me because right now I'm a senior geologist, but on a field, yes, in theory I know what I will be doing, but in practice I don't know how to uh, install a gas meter, for example, or like um, certain things I have to learn, and that takes time, so I cannot be a senior position on a drilling uh, rig. So switching back and forth is, is a bit hard. It's not it's not not possible, it's possible, but it's something you have to consider. And finally, final um, food for thought I'll leave you with is always have a backup plan. Uh, because in real life, if you graduate and you don't get a job right away, um, you have to have something, some backup plan. In uh, our, like in our field, when we, when, in our faculty, when I graduated, we had about 30 geologists and only five of us had offers for a full-time position. The rest only had part-time jobs available to them, like summer jobs, or uh, no jobs. And a lot of them, a lot of the people that I graduated with went back to university. Some decided to become professors, and so they went to do masters and then later PhDs, and they wanted to be in academia and do research. Others um, went back to school and did uh, MBAs or law degrees and completely switched their careers. And others uh, took their part-time job and worked for a year and then able were able to land a full-time job with petroleum companies or environmental companies. So always have a backup plan. Uh, think about, don't count on like, oh, I'm definitely getting a job straight out of school. Not always happens, it's just real life. Uh, it's, I think it's every degree, it's not just geology or like it's anything, right? So just think ahead. And, but most of all, uh, enjoy the science, enjoy the studies and please subscribe. I have filmed uh, a really, really different video for next week. So I hope you guys enjoy it. Hit that subscribe button and I will see you next week in my video. Bye.